A series of violent earthquakes is hitting southern Italy, and fears of an eruption of the Phlegraean fields are growing, and now there are also strange bubbles coming to the surface at Lake Diverno in Pozzoli. A similar thing happened at Lake Neos in Cameroon, but there no one was able to stop the disaster that killed thousands of people. If you want to find out everything about it, stay tuned until the end. Welcome, friends. A supervolcano is making Italy tremble. In the last few weeks, there have been violent earthquakes again in the Phlegraean fields near Naples. I'll keep you up to date on all developments here on the channel, so please feel free to subscribe now so you'll never miss the latest news from the Phlegraean fields again. Thanks, guys. Yes, hundreds of small and medium-sized earthquakes, some with a magnitude of 2.0, have been registered west of Naples. The strongest quake took place on Whit Monday with a magnitude of 4.4. This was the strongest earthquake in the Campi Flegre in 40 years, and in Lake Diverno, right next to the city of Pozzoli, which is located in the middle of the Phlegraean fields, you could see that something is happening again in the volcanic soil. A viral video shows that the water in the lake is apparently boiling. Let's take a look. Small bubbles are rising to the surface here, and the speechless woman in the video reports that she has never seen such gas emissions here in the lake, although it is known that the lake is part of the volcanic area of the Campi Flegre. The bubbles are also easy to explain because the fact that the ground has risen in the last few days has released the gases that were trapped deep below. This is a process that is also known to occur in volcanic areas such as Lake Lacquer Sea in the Eiffel region. Here too, volcanic gases such as carbon dioxide rise from crevices and cracks in the ground through the water to the surface, creating so-called mofets. Let me know in the comments who has been to Lake Lacquer Sea and has seen this phenomenon with their own eyes. Lake Lacquer Sea and Lago Diverno are important examples of how volcanic activity and geothermal processes underground can influence the behavior of lakes. The release of such gases also always poses a potential danger, which is why such volcanic lakes are under close observation. The Italian Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, the Eingewe, is monitoring the situation in Naples 24-7 and issuing daily reports on the situation. However, this is not the case everywhere. The Lake Neos was completely neglected decades ago, which led to a truly terrible disaster with thousands of deaths. Before we take a closer look at the course of this disaster and clarify how it could have come to this and what volcanic conditions must have been present, let's first clarify a few facts about the lake. Lake Nios is a crater lake in northwestern Cameroon, around 315 kilometers from the capital, Yaoundé. The region is volcanically active and part of the Cameroon Volcanic Line System, a chain of volcanoes that extends from the Gulf of Guinea through Cameroon to Chad. When South America and Africa separated from each other 100 million years ago due to plate tectonics, the Mbere Rift Valley was formed in West Africa, a rift valley that runs through the whole of Cameroon. The famous Mount Cameroon, an active volcano in the highest mountain in West Africa, lies exactly Exactly on this line, as does Lake Nios. Today it lies in a so-called Mar, an explosion crater that formed during an eruption around 12,000 years ago. The lake has a diameter of around 1,800 meters and is a good 200 meters deep. However, the lake is best known for its high concentration of CO2 in the deeper water layers, which comes from magmatic processes deep below the surface and accumulates in the lake. It was precisely this gas that led to the aforementioned disaster more than 30 years ago. Lake Neos is one of three known lakes on Earth in which the water contains very high levels of dissolved carbon dioxide so that the water has almost reached the maximum amount of CO2 that it can absorb under the given conditions. In other words, the water is almost saturated with CO2, which means that it can hardly absorb any more CO2 without starting to escape as a gas. This almost complete saturation increases the risk that even small changes in the lake, such as temperature fluctuations or seismic activity, can cause large amounts of dissolved CO2 to be suddenly released from the water, which can lead to truly dangerous situations, as was the case in the 1980s. To put it in a scientifically correct way, the water in the lake is saturated with CO2, and there is a constant risk that the lake will suddenly explode. In 1986, Lake Neos experienced a truly tragic but also extraordinary event, which was described as a limnic eruption, and in which an extremely large amount of gas was released in a very short time. We have to imagine that carbon dioxide had been accumulating in the depths of the lake for years. 
fed into the lake by volcanic activity. The water in the lake was layered. This means that there was an upper layer with less dense low gas water and a layer below that was saturated with CO2. The different densities of the water layers in the lake normally ensure that the CO2 remains in the deeper layers and cannot rise to the surface into the less dense water layers. This stability is important because it prevents the CO2 from being released spontaneously and suddenly from the depths of the lake. However, at Lake Neos, there was a previously unknown trigger, probably a landslide caused by heavy rain or seismic activity, which disrupted the harmonious relationship between the two water layers. This trigger then caused the water layers to be suddenly mixed, allowing the CO2 to expand and rise from the saturated deep layer to the surface, where the pressure decreases and the dissolved CO2 can be held less well in the water. This releases the gas, which forms bubbles that rise to the surface. This triggered a chain reaction in which the layers became more and more mixed and more and more gas was released from the depths. Each new bubble that rose caused further disturbances and brought more deep gas saturated water to the surface. To better understand this, just imagine a bottle of sparkling wine. As long as the bottle is closed and under pressure, the CO2 remains dissolved. But as soon as the bottle is opened and the pressure decreases, the CO2 escapes and forms bubbles. So next time you're at a Formula One race, you can show off your knowledge and explain to the person sitting next to you why Hamilton and Alonso can splash around with the champagne so much. It's pure science. The lake was like a shaken bottle of champagne. The process released more CO2 and the water bubbled extremely strongly. And within a very short time, a large amount of CO2 could escape from the water in a fountain-like manner. The experts estimate that around 1.6 million tons escaped. That is about as much as 350,000 cars emit in a year. In any case, the CO2 then formed a dense cloud over the lake, which quickly spread over the surrounding area, rolling down the surrounding valleys and covering the villages of Neos, Kam, and Subos. It is important to note that carbon dioxide is heavier than air, which is why the CO2 mainly accumulated in the lower lying areas and spread up to 25 kilometers from the lake. The consequences were devastating and almost unimaginable. People and animals in the surrounding villages suffocated within minutes as they had unknowingly inhaled the odorless and colorless gas. There was no warning. No one saw the danger coming or even recognized it when it was there. One seven to a hundred people and countless animals died as a result of this gas cloud. Fortunately, there were a few survivors, but they suffered from health problems such as breathing difficulties, eye irritation, and of course, psychological damage. The entire process from the initial disruption of the water layers to the deadly release of gas and the death of many people took only a few hours. The release of the CO2 and the spread of the gas cloud occurred within minutes, which shows that the people had no time to escape, which explains the high number of victims. Of course, this raises the question, couldn't this have been foreseen? The problem was that Lake Neos was not under the kind of control in the 1980s that it is today. The phenomenon of such a limnic eruption was largely unknown and not researched. At that time, scientists had not yet fully realized how dangerous CO2 accumulations in volcanic lakes can be. There were therefore no monitoring and safety measures in place to accurately control the CO2 content in the lake. This changed, of course, after the disaster, and people became more and more aware of the danger posed by CO2-saturated lakes. International researchers put in place various safety measures to prevent such a scenario from happening again in the future. In the 1990s, for example, so-called degassing pipes were installed in the lake to channel the CO2 from the deep layers of the lake to the surface and release it in a controlled manner. This prevents the accumulation of dangerous amounts of CO2. And scientists also regularly measure the concentration of CO2 in the water, as well as other important parameters such as pressure or temperature. They have installed seismic monitoring devices and built dams to prevent landslides. This means that the sensitive stratification of the water can no longer be disturbed. Thanks to the degassing, the situation at the lake is now stable. The CO2 concentration in the deep water is regularly reduced and the local population is better informed and prepared should such an emergency occur again. But what is the situation now at Lake Lach or at Lago Diavano in Pozzuoli? After all, these lakes have a few things in common with Lake Neos. They are all located in volcanically active regions and all lakes can release volcanic gases such as carbon dioxide. 
However, scientists see no reason for concern. Although Lago de Verno and Lake Lacursi also release gas, there is no evidence of a similarly dangerous stratification of CO2-saturated water in both lakes. So it's safe to say that it's the quantity that matters. A limnic eruption is therefore rather unlikely here, and the risk can currently be considered low. The lakes are being intensively monitored, and researchers have now gathered complex knowledge about the geological processes in the regions in order to assess the risk and ensure that appropriate measures are taken to ensure the safety of the population. So you can have a picnic with Veno and Arancini on the shores of Lake Daverno without any great risk. At least there is no danger from the lake itself, but of course, you should keep an eye on the earthquake situation in the Campi Flegre. Yes, as soon as something happens, I'll let you know right away. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in more fascinating volcanic stories, then click on the video below. Before the earthquakes, under the Phlegraean fields, residents heard a strange noise. Click on the video to find out what it was, and you can also hear the original recordings of the creepy sound. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, friends.